I think, first of all, um, the fact that we've got people here from all over the world makes it important because wherever you have a forum of people gathered from all over the world, the chances are everybody learns something that they can take back where they came from. So that's definitely one of the reasons why. And um, I'm representing my country, um, Ghana. So definitely I felt I needed to be here because I was in Dakla as well and it was a very productive meeting and this one seems to be um, even more so because we have plans to actually brainstorm and discuss a few things and hopefully implement what we, we discuss here. Young people are the leaders. That's, that's the way it's going and um, unless we can create that bridge between the current leadership and the up and coming leaders, there's always going to be a gap. So there has to be that bridge in between where, as we have the current leaders in place, we're also grooming people to come along so that they understand the, um, the issues on the ground and they also learn from the mistakes so that we're not repeating mistakes. Because we seem to have a situation where history is constantly repeating itself. And at some point that has to stop so we can actually progress and move forward as opposed to progress and then there's stagnation and progress and then there's retrogression. We need to find a way and the only way is to bring the young people on board in the decision-making process as it is now so that they can move with the forward thinking and bring fresh ideas, you know, because um, sometimes you have people coming into the situation, they haven't been contaminated by being in politics for so long, so they're coming with fresh ideas, they're coming with, with um, new opportunities and a new vision which will hopefully do the world a lot of good compared to where we've been so far. Um, it's, it's a very interesting thing um, where if you put a frog in hot water and as the temperature increases, the frog adjusts its body temperature. And as it gets warmer and warmer, the frog adjusts its body temperature until eventually the frog cannot move. It, it wants to jump but it can't, it's stuck. And then of course it will die in the heat of the, the boiling water. And um, the, the question that I threw out was, you know, what killed the frog? And the easy answer is the boiling water. But actually, what killed the frog was its inability to recognize the danger it was in and to jump in time. It stayed and kept adjusting to the situation until it was too late to do anything about it. And the, um, that was supposed to be an um, analogy in a way for where we find ourselves now globally, where people are enduring terrible situations and they're adapting and they're staying in the situations, they're adapting. And what happens when you keep adapting to a situation that's not good is you end up becoming so disempowered that you don't have any reserves left to actually act. And so the whole point was to say, recognize the danger of the water that's getting hotter and stop responding to it by adjusting your body temperature, but jump out of the heat, do something about it, you know, and to act quickly. So that was the whole idea of the boiling frog syndrome. <laughs> I think that um, it's a very tragic situation that we're dealing with and I think it should be a very big lesson to everyone involved, especially with the, the, the countries who intervene in the various countries like Libya, to actually recognize that intervene, intervening in a country with that extent of violence does not resolve the issue. It only makes matters worse. Now we've got a whole group migrating and they have nowhere to go. They're being sent back into the situation that is dangerous, you know, and I think that there should be a bit more forward thinking and lateral thinking. When you're trying to deal with a problem in a country, you need to understand it from the point of view of the people in the country because your approach standing from the outside looking in might not necessarily be the right solution for the people and unless you have a solution that comes about in consultation with the people you're trying to help you might have the wrong approach and actually make a situation that's bad even worse and that's what we have now it is a very big lesson and i really hope that we can learn from this and in the meantime there has to be some humane approach to handling these people who are migrating because they are living in fear of their lives whether it's for political or even just mere safety reasons or economic reasons. They don't feel safe where they are and they're moving in their numbers. A solution has to be brought about that does not involve putting them back into a dangerous situation. So the, the approach has to be from a point of view of morality. You know, the whole sub-region was destabilized. And unless the solution is found there and the problem is resolved, the migration is not going to stop people will not stay in dangerous situations if they have an option to move.
So it has to be approached in two ways. Deal with the problem on the ground and try and resolve it and also manage the people who are coming across because putting them back in the situation is not going to solve the problem. I think if you just think about us as human beings, there are men and there are women. And too much of the emphasis has been put on the male-dominated aspect of everything. So in politics or in business or in economics, whatever the case may be, there is, there is a, a skew, there's, a, there's an imbalance. And unless we can bring women on board properly, we can't have a proper development that is sustainable. Women bring on board a certain aspect of nurturing, a certain aspect of thinking and compassion into the equation that will make solutions more lasting. And also, it also means that through the women, we can actually reach the children a lot better because our children are the future leaders. And if we don't have the right upbringing and the right balance for the children, not just the girl child, but the males as well, there has to be that gender sensitization and the balance. And women have a central role to play in that. And in the countries where women have a bigger role, you actually find that there's a lot more progress and there's greater balance and you have fewer conflicts. So I think it's important that we definitely include women in everything that we do. It's the only way forward, you know. And um, to quote um, John um, 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 Agri in um, Ghana, who said many, many years ago, and this was a man, and he said that the education of a man is equal to the education of an individual, but the education of a woman results in the education of the community and it's a very deep and poignant saying and if you actually go into it you actually realize that on a very basic level the woman has a huge role to play in imparting knowledge to leave a woman out of the equation of development or politics or business means that it's not going to be a balanced equation definitely women are part of the solution that's the only way forward I think what's important about the forum is that we don't just talk amongst ourselves as women because then we're not winning either. We have to talk about the problems and the solutions, but we have to bring the men on board as well. Because if we're coming up with solutions and we can't bring the men on side, it won't work. You know, you have countries where the women do a lot of talking and they do a lot of grouping together, but unless they can have that balance where the men are involved in the process and understand that it's not trying to usurp their positions or trying to create an imbalance, it's actually looking for that harmony between all of us. And to bring about that change, it has to have the men involved as well. So even though it's the women's forum, the fact that we have have the men here also participating is important because as they attend these these events they also go back with a greater awareness of some of the problems that we face and some of the solutions that we're coming up with as women and I think that's invaluable.